A network support is very isolated from both of these professions. Without a network administrator, there is no way that a network is running without any issues. A network engineer's main role is The world of networking is only getting bigger and bigger by the day. Reason being the number of devices that can communicate with each other is increasing many fold. And as a result of this, the size of the networks are also increasing. You today have organizations that have networks spanning across geographical regions with thousands of devices as part of them. You also have the transition that's taking place from IPv4 to IPv6 addresses. Networks today aren't like networks of the past, wherein today you have networks filled with cloud infrastructure, software-defined networking, artificial intelligence, network security, and the list can go on and on and on. As a result of this, the roles and responsibilities that are part of this field of networking have also been divided into different professions, such as you have network architects, network engineers, network administrators, network support engineers, etc. In this video, I am going to be speaking about three distinct networking roles being a network engineer, a network administrator and a network support engineer. So if you want to get into the field of networking and are confused which direction is the one you should choose, this is the video for you. So let's dive straight in. But before we go any further, guys, I would really like you to hit the subscribe button and the like button on this video and YouTube analytics tells me that most of my viewers haven't subscribed to the channel. So please pause the video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon as well. So you don't miss a video the next time I post. The way I'm going to be breaking this video down is I will first speak about the roles and responsibilities of each of these three distinct roles within networking. And then we look at what your day to day may look like as either of these and what are the certifications, for example, you need to do if you want to get into either of these three professions. Let's start off with a network engineer. A network engineer's main role is designing and deployment of networks. Now, depending on the organization you work for and the size of the networks that your organization supports, it's very possible that you will be working on project based work. What I mean by project based work is that it's possible that you will be working for clients and uh, you'll be coming up with new solutions, uh, maybe advancements for a client's network, pretty much designing and deploying from a very high level perspective. You also have to focus heavily on network documentation and network diagrams. The reason being when you're building a project for a third party organization or for your client, it's very essential that you know what exactly is happening within the network and you document everything that's taking place because Tomorrow, let's say you have a support engineer that needs to fix an issue within the network. They will then refer to your documentation as the source of truth, which was created when the solution was first put into place. Because of this, as a network engineer, you need to have a keen eye towards network design and deployment. Another very important part of a network engineer's role is constant liaising with stakeholders and vendors. It's highly possible that you're deploying vendor based solutions like Cisco solutions or Palo Alto solutions or Fortinet solutions or Aruba solutions. So in most cases, you will be in constant communication with vendors from these companies because you will need to understand and know what exactly their products do and how it could benefit the client's network or your own organization's network for that matter. A network administrator, on the other hand, needs to focus solely on more day-to-day -day networking operations. This involves configuring of routers and switches from a BAU perspective. When I say BAU, BAU stands for business as usual. So let's say there are any small issues or small tasks that you need to perform on these routers and switches. You as a network administrator will need to know how to configure these devices. Secondly, a huge part of a network administrator's role is constant network monitoring. Therefore, network monitoring tools needs to be a very strong part of your skill set. Use of SolarWinds and PRTG is a huge bonus where you can set up these networking devices for monitoring. And if there are any issues, you can then address those issues based on alerts that are raised by these monitoring tools and softwares. As a network administrator, it's very important that you need to know how to use network monitoring dashboards. Dashboards with a lot of metrics, performance metrics, alerts, etc. Because as I said, daily maintenance and running of a network is a network administrator's 
daily routine building network documentation and diagrams may not come your way as much usually that's done when the network is built or a design is deployed and as spoken about previously that is what a network engineer will do but let's say for example there are any minor changes that are made within the network then it is a network administrator's role who has made those changes to go and reflect those changes in the necessary documentation therefore if you already compare a network administrator's role to a network engineer's role rather than actual design and deployment you're focusing more on the everyday running of a network now it's possible that you don't need to have a deep level of technical knowledge as compared to a network engineer but hey without a network administrator there is no way that a network is running without any issues. Let's come to a network support engineer. Network support engineers are the front line of an organization support team. A network support engineer is very different to a network engineer and a network administrator, wherein in the previous two fields, you will have some sort of a roles and responsibilities creep that takes place. A network admin may need to do roles that a network engineer does and a network engineer may need to do certain functions that a network admin does. But a network support is very isolated from both of these professions. You face a lot of customer calls and customer tickets. Let's say you're supporting a client who's facing constant network issues. They will raise tickets that are ultimately fed into your queue as a network support engineer. And it's your role and responsibility to get in touch with these clients, see exactly what is the problem within the network, and then try and implement a fix to get rid of these issues. Network troubleshooting is a very important part of your skill set. Hence, if you don't like deep dive troubleshooting of network devices, possibly a network support engineer role is not for you. Network support engineers are meant to also speak to vendors and stakeholders in the sense that most of the times what happens is, for example, you have an issue with one of the network devices and you don't have a fix for that. You then have to liaise with these vendors, especially the support teams on the vendor side. You need to be proficient with solving tickets from a customer perspective. But at the same time, you also need to be very efficient when dealing with vendor support teams to get the right solutions and support from their end. Now let's look at the certifications that you need if you want to get into either of these three professions. In order to get an entry level position, it's highly essential that you have the CCNA, which is provided by Cisco or the CompTIA Network Plus, which is provided by CompTIA. One thing that I would like to share with you guys is that as a network engineer, you need to focus a lot on simulation tools. Hence, the use of GNS3, EVNG or Cisco Packet Tracer is something that's going to come your way a lot. Before you even design the solution, you need to be able to first test it in a virtual environment and what other tools better than GNS3 or EVNG to test out networking solutions. Hence, hands-on simulation softwares are something you need to know very well if you want to have the cutting edge as a network engineer. As a network administrator, I've already said you need to know how to configure routers, switches, and monitoring of network devices. Hence, PRTG and SolarWinds. If you can do any free courses related to these network monitoring tools, I believe you're sorted as a network administrator. Another very important tool that you need to know as a network admin is Wireshark. Yes, Wireshark is used to analyze packets in its rawest form, and that can help you fix any issues within the network that, let's say, arise because of alerts from these monitoring dashboards. Speaking about Wireshark, as a network support engineer, possibly the use of Wireshark is even more essential as compared to a network admin. Because of the title, Network Support Engineer, there is going to be a lot of troubleshooting that's going to come your way. And hence, the use of tools like Wireshark is something you need to know inside out. Each of these three professions is highly important when it comes to the field of network. You can be rest assured if you choose networking as a field you want to get into, whether you choose an engineer, an administrator or a support engineer, you're already setting yourself up for success because the field of networking is going nowhere. If anything, it's only getting bigger and better by the day. So if this video has been useful and informational, I would really like you to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, comment what you think about the video and I'll see you guys in the next video.